Oh, I think I gotta keep my gear under control. Oh, oh, oh there's some duct tape that ought to work. Uh, let's see how that works. Oh, hello, wild people. Are you losing so much of your backpacking gear that you've resorted to using duct tape and bungee cords, clamps, and clothespins to keep your gear in place? Well, fret no more, because today I have some tips to help you keep all of your gear under control on a long distance hike. Thank you for tuning in to AK Wild One. You know, it's a real bummer when you lose gear on the trail, especially if it's a critical item like a water filter, spork, glasses, or God forbid, toilet paper. The good news is that if you follow these tips, you're less likely to sacrifice a critical piece of gear to the trail gods. So tip number one, keep on the bright side. Don't ever purchase camouflage gear no camo anything. You know, I've actually seen camo underwear and camo toilet paper for sale. And I kind of wonder what kind of people would actually think about purchasing those two items. The brighter the colors, the better. I'm not a believer in earth tones. Actually, I'm not really sure what an earth tone is. Is that the sound I make when I slip and fall on the trail? Or is it when the earth experiences indigestion? If you do have gear that blends into the woods or the outdoors, help it stand out by maybe using like a fluorescent string on a titanium spork or reflective or bright tape. Tip number two, simplify, simplify. Before you start your long distance hike, figure out what you really need and don't need. Chances are you don't need more than an extra pair of socks or underwear, pants or shorts. Be able to also categorize your gear. For me, my categories included my sleep system, my clothes, cooking food, camera gear, and ditty bag with my electronics and toiletries. Those were my major categories and I could identify everything that was in each category which helped me remember if I loaded everything in the morning. Tip number three. So also organize by systems. I use stuff sacks. Generally, I can scrunch my sleeping bag, sleeping clothes, silk sheet into one bag. I have a smaller extra clothes bag and my food and cooking system goes into my bear canister. The electronics and camera support gear I put into a ditty bag, which includes a toothbrush, repair kit, and then things I need to access, like my water filter, sandals, poop trowel. I keep those back in, the, in my backpack pouch. Tip number four, before you go to sleep, make sure you've organized your gear. Put most everything in your pack and bear canister. Don't leave anything out at night. Know when you're in psycho deer country. If you leave your clothes out, the deers or rodents might be attracted to the salt. And I've heard stories of hikers who have had hoodies eaten by deer. I live a little dangerously on the trail because I like to air out my stinkier clothes at night. I like to air out my underwear and hiking gloves, and I usually put those on my tripod or my trekking poles. I also realize I might be taking a chance. Some rodents might be trapeze artists and climb my poles or tripod and, and then start chewing on my clothes. Tip number five, identify those critical to lose items and make a mental inventory before you move from location to location. So for example, my critical items are my inReach, my spork, my water filter, rain gear, headlamp, and of course my camera gear. Before you leave camp, maybe physically touch them in your pack. If you wear glasses, it's a good idea to wear sunglasses straps. So if you go swimming, you don't lose your glasses at the bottom of the lake. And maybe wear a cheaper off-the-shelf wedding ring instead of your original. Tip number six, use a carabiner to close zippers if you have them. 
I learned this trick in the San Jacintos when I lost one of my action cameras, which was really painful. It had some cool videos on it that I lost forever. I carried it in my front hip pack and then it fell out after the zipper came open as we were going through some blowdowns. After that I learned my lesson. I bought a tiny carabiner that I used to hold the zipper loops together and I haven't lost any camera gear since. Tip number seven, sort your morning stuff on a tarp or you know, cell phone mattress so they don't, all your gear doesn't really fade into the dirt. And maintain a solid ritual for packing. For example, Flash decided I was capable of counting the tent stakes to ensure we pulled and collected all of them. I had an important job. I've seen socks left behind because people put them on trees and then forgot about them. That's why I like to hang mine on the tripod. You know, once you get into the routine on the trail, you get to the point where you can pack your backpack in just a couple of minutes. So having a solid routine will serve you well. Tip number eight, find the most secure place on your pack for your passport and your wallet. Put those items in a place that you do not disturb during the hustle and bustle of loading and unloading your pack each day. My backpack has a zippered pouch inside the pack that I place my passport and wallet in and I don't disturb it until I go to town or need cash. Tip number nine, after a well-deserved rest or a siesta and you get up and you've loaded your backpack and you're ready to go, make a 360 with your trekking poles stretched out. That way you can check to see if you've missed anything in your circle and it's a good way to ensure you have your trekking poles. Tip number 10, after every stop, touch your camera, water bottles, filter, make a pre-flight check. Tip number 11, stay streamlined when going through blowdowns. Make sure everything is secure and you probably don't wanna have your closed cell phone pad on top because it'll probably get cut. That's why I have rips on mine. Tip number 12, when hitchhiking or taking a bus, reduce the size of your trekking poles. And I put mine in my side pocket and secure them with the side straps. And then I place my camera and my wallet in my hip pack that I carry in the car. And then when you've arrived and you're ready to pull out your backpack, look quickly to make sure that nothing has fallen out, particularly your water bottles. Well, wild people, losing essential gear in the woods is a gut ache and I hope it doesn't happen to you. The amazing thing about backpacking is you get to reduce the things you need in your world to the basic essentials, which gives you more time and energy to devote to the better things in life. I do hope the only things you lose on the trail are your worries, stress, and bad health. Well, until we meet again, live wildly, my friends.